Hi, I'm Craig Sigal, the mental toughness trainer for youth athletes. Enjoy another experts interview I did with coach Mike Tully of Total Game Plan, who has studied peak performance first as an international sports writer and then as a championship coach. He shares with us some of his insights he has learned from the greatest athletes and sports thinkers in the entire world. Coach Mike, you told us you were going to tell us a little bit about the four areas of skill acquisition and improvement, correct? Yes, Dr. Anders Ericsson down at Florida State University is recognized as the expert on experts. How do people get good at what they do? How should we practice so that we can get good? Number one, there has to be a motivation to attend to tasks. You know, sometimes it's a lot easier to work on things that you're good at than things that you're not good at. Well, you got to get good at things that you're not good at. You can't have a comfortable practice. You have to be out of your comfort zone. Uh, so you have to have the motivation to do that. I think of it as, uh, let's say you were always in a foreign country where you didn't quite speak the language. You know, that's not a comfortable feeling. You know, that feeling when you go into a party and you don't really know anybody, that's an uncomfortable feeling. Well, great performers are never comfortable in their practice. They, they're working slightly outside their comfort zone. And like we said before, that takes motivation. It, it really takes passion. It really takes fire to do something that just doesn't feel good. So that's the first thing. You have to be motivated to attend to tasks. And I want to put an exclamation on that. One of my favorite sayings, comfort is the cemetery of the soul. Ooh. A few years ago, the Tampa Bay Buccaneer said comfort is death. So we're kind of all thinking along the same lines. Absolutely. We're not here on the planet to be comfortable. That's not our purpose for being here. To be, have the motivation to attend to tax. Who is it? Shaquille O'Neal couldn't shoot a foul shot. Well, you know, he's got he's to practice that. So that's number one. Number two, practice design. The activity must be designed so that it can be easily understood after a period of brief instruction. And by that we mean it has to stay simple and it has to build on what went before but not be what went before. Harvey Penick, the great uh, golfing instructor, said you begin every practice session with four foot putts. But once you get good at four foot putts, then you go to five foot putts, then you go to six foot putts. You don't go out to the uh, practice range and start with 30 footers. Right. So the practice design is very, very important. Number three, you have to get feedback. You have to get tons and tons of feedback. And you have to attend to that feedback. You can't just, obs you can't just observe it and not do anything about it. If you're slicing every ball, that tells you something. If you're hooking every ball, that tells you something. Uh, and you have to do something about what you saw. Uh, sometimes videotape can uh, give you feedback. Sometimes well-chosen words from the coach. Sometimes statistics can give you feedback. But feedback and attending to feedback is a huge part in acquiring skill. And then finally, you got to do it all the time. you got to have tons and tons of of repetitions and it's exhausting <laughs> so it's so exhausting that you can't do it for more than one or two hours a day yeah yeah yeah, yeah which is yeah. why I wouldn't only practice 90 minutes a day so these coaches who have their teams out there for three days and three and four hour practices guess what it's not a good idea well that, that's a really good point and I'm always preaching listen we build back after having torn down, just like bodybuilding, when we lift weights, when we exercise, it's the recovery that actually makes us stronger. And the mental, the mental game works, the brain and the mind work the same way. You can't just keep beating yourself up 24 hours a day. You've got to have a recovery. Now let me put an exclamation point on what you just said. Yes. Uh, three areas, uh, sleep, breathing, and looking. Let's take them now. Uh, I don't think our coaches and athletes fully appreciate the role of sleep. There's lots of evidence that sleep is what consolidates learning. So if you study for that big test or if you have a big practice in front of your big game and then you don't sleep, you do not consolidate that learning. It's like it never happened at all. So we have to be really careful as coaches to make sure that our kids get enough sleep. It has to be a huge part of what we do. So that's number one. Number two, we have to teach our kids how to breathe. Mike Piazza, who's headed for the Hall of Fame as a baseball player, 
He was once asked what he does in the on-deck circle when he was waiting to hit. And he says, I gain control of my breathing. Now, think of that. Beautiful. It's, it's just a reminder that the most profound things are the most simple things. You know? And the number three, every once in a while, take a chance and look up at the sky. It's really hard to feel worried. It's really hard to feel important when you look up at the sky. You know, it's a sense of uh, wonder. You know, here we just are in this world, and the sky is all about possibilities. You know, people who are discouraged, they look at the ground. Well, the ground is about limitations, and the sky is about possibilities. And so every once in a while, we just want to take a, uh, a moment to look up. Be sure to subscribe to Mental Toughness Tips YouTube channel to get more expert interviews and tips.